comic books. Ever since I was a kid, I have these memories of when I was sick. My mom would let me stay home sick from school, and she'd go to the store and pick up these comics for me to read. Uh, this is a newer one. This one's great. And I just remember it was a place for my imagination to run wild, you know, to really connect with these characters and just have a really good time. <laughs> And you can tell, I was a Batman fan for sure. Oh, this one's super cool. Oh my gosh. Thanks, Mom. Um, it, it just really introduced me to this form of storytelling and of art and of, like, heroism and brave deeds. And even these old guys. I don't even remember where I got these, but just being totally fascinated with, you know, the art of storytelling and of illustration and of how motion and dialogue was kind of treated in these amazing advertisements. Love it. Um, and now, you know, even Calvin and Hobbes, these classics, like my, my seven-year-old boy, he has read every single Calvin and Hobbes book, and I just feel like a really good dad <laughs> at the end of the day. And even my little girl, she's five years old, and she totally loves these Hilda, Hilda um, graphic novels. And these are just super. It's also a show on Netflix that I really recommend. You know, so when I heard about the Magic Leap Made Fire collaboration, it got me really curious about how they were going to treat, um, you know, the art of comic book reading, and it got me really excited. At the 2017 New York Comic Con, Andy Lanning and Anthony Williams from Magic Leap were on a panel called The Future of Comics in New Realities, and they announced an exciting partnership with Made Fire to make motion books available on the upcoming Magic Leap device. Now, Andy Lanning, this guy, he's the head of Magic Leap Studios and previously was a Marvel DC Comics uh, writer, inker, illustrator. Uh, you might not recognize him, but you recognize his work. He's the one teaming up with Dan Abnett um, that created a second volume and revived Guardians of the Galaxy. And this is before the films came out recently and really just injected a the Marvel Universe with these amazing characters. So Andy Lanning and Anthony Williams are on this panel talking about the future of comics in new realities. What's really cool about this story is that five years earlier at the 2012 New York Comic Con, uh, Magic Leap had a presence. They had an actual booth, but they didn't have any hardware or really even a location that they were working and operating out of. Instead, they were posing as a comic book company um, showing one of their comics called Magic Leap Welcome to an the Experience and they were testing people to see how receptive they would be to mixed reality. This comic that Magic Leap was sharing at the time was actually is really telling of what they were trying to build. So it features two kids that go to a comic book factory much like Willy Wonka. Uh, you get this big larger than life character that is the president of this Magic Leap comic book factory and he introduces the kids uh, to these new realities. He opens a portal and he shows these things flying around, the Magic Leaper nursery. And I mean, just looking at the design of the Magic Leapers, you see how the eyes actually directly informed the design of the form factor of the current uh, Magic Leap 1 headset. Another fascinating detail about these red magic leapers that you're looking at here is how closely they resemble the light pack used which powers the magic leap headset. Coincidence? So what is Made Fire? Well the Made Fire team, they pioneered a new comic reading experience and format. It's a sort of a 2.5D where instead of flat static panels you now have layers, depth, parallax, motion, sound, and perspective all added to the reading experience. So what is Madefire doing with Magic Leap? Well, there's two main things. Number one, Madefire released a motion book reader specific for the Magic Leap Mixed Reality device. I'll be doing a, a deep kind of deep dive review of this system later on in this video that you'll get to check out. The second thing that Madefire is doing with Magic Leap is a motion book creation platform that they're calling the Motion Book Tool. This is available in early access and you can check out the link in the description. It's a really cool tool where illustrators and artists, storytellers will be able to create motion, parallax, add audio, um, create sequences for their motion books and then upload them directly to the 
uh, made fire storefront. All right, so number one, things I love about the Made Fire Magic Leap application is audio. As a great example, we have Overwatch. McCree gonna be on a train saving some lives. We can see real quick, you get this ambisonic sound. The origin is behind this image right here, and so when I turn my head left or right, and get a sense of direction from where the audio is coming from. Great job, guys. And it's not just music either, it's also environmental sounds. Some really cool ambient cues that you can use to pull the reader into the story and help them connect with the environment, with the setting, with the mood, you know, that the, that the creator is trying to establish for that particular scene. Hear the birds. And that sound. The truck cruising through the desert. Number two, I really like the interface. These big freaking thumbnails are super nice. Uh, it's very clean, it's easy to read, um, easy to navigate. Um, left and right, basically just to swipe back and forth on the touchpad on your controller. Very, very nice. Easy to get around. Sexy point number three is laser pointer here on the interface. It's actually really nice being able to just point my controller around wherever I want to select. In some other Magic Leap applications, uh, I have to move my head to move the cursor, for example, and that's just tedious and annoying. Or in other apps, I don't have a laser pointer, and it's not based on my gaze. It's I have to move my thumb on this little thumb pad to move the cursor across the interface, and that's also kind of tedious and annoying. So good job on that one. Number four, something I really love is the ability to scale, being able to move the panels to fit better into my environment is a really nice touch. Even when you're inside of a comic, for example, you can also adjust the scale up and down to make it just a better reading experience. And just depending on the size of your room or your office or wherever it is that you're reading these comics, it's helpful to be able to adjust the size of those panels. Number five, we're going to take a look at panel animations and how the panels are used in an interesting way to evoke uh, a sense of direction or uh, the general mood. And you're also going to get a sense of other things we've already talked about with ambient sound and music. This one is really cool. See that slides to the right just like he's opening the door to go out. So that one slid up and then this one slid down. So his hand moves up so the panel slides up, the blood drips down, the panel slides down. So it's using motion uh, to just enhance what's already happening. Really slick. Number six, we're looking at screen brightness and color brightness. I'm really impressed with the Magic Leap's ability to just make really bright screens. So you see the pictures here on my back wall. Well, as I bring this image closer, they, uh, they're occluded pretty well. Like, just no matter where you're at, you're going to be able to have a really good clear view about uh, of whatever the panel's trying to show you. You will notice that the blacks in Magic Leap are actually transparent, so that you'll be able to see whatever is behind it if you focus on that. But most likely you'll just be paying attention to the story. Number seven, we're looking at legible text. So as we jump into a comic, you can see that we're not going to have any reading issues, that we're not going to have any fuzzy characters or any of that weird anti-aliasing 
that we get sometimes when you're looking at text in virtual reality. So of course this is not real text being rendered, it, it is a flat image that's just being presented as, you know, a PNG or a JPEG, for example. And also with Magic Leap, you don't have that weird screen door effect that you get in Oculus, Lir Oculus Rift or HTC Vive, where you have those strange grid lines kind of running across your image, making it hard to read texts. And also being able to scale according to your vision definitely makes that a little more accessible. And number eight, free, free content. And that's what we love, right? We spent all this money on our Magic Leap devices. And <laughs> I love free content, uh, and especially high quality free content. The best part is that Made Fire, this is a free app to download in Magic Leap World, and then each of these presented so far are all free uh, to view as well. Uh, it is worth, worth noting that uh, there are also print books that you can see here, which are not motion books, they're print books displayed here in Magic Leap. Um, I do anticipate that there will be premium content later down the road, as well as the free content, just like it is on their uh, mobile mobile apps for Madefire. So overall, the Madefire app for Magic Leap is a really pleasant experience. I'm really enjoying my time in this. However, I do think there are a few points worth noting uh, of different things that can be improved on. Number one is audio. When you're jumping into a comic, sometimes the audio feels a little loud. And depending on your environment, I might want to be able to adjust that. So first time being in here, it's like, oh, my kid's in bed over here. Or I'm in a place where I'd like to be a little bit quieter. Maybe I'd like to adjust the volume. Well, I pause it using the home button and I go to settings, for example. And I don't see any way to adjust the volume. And because this is what's called an immersive app in Magic Leap terminology, I'm not able to access the, the, the global menu options as far as I could find. As it exists right now, the only way to adjust the volume once you're reading a comic book is to actually use the manual buttons on your Magic Leap device. So the volume up and volume down. So let's try the volume down. So that lets me adjust the volume up and down, which is nice. Um, it'd also be really handy to let me do that within the interface itself, if possible. So improvement number two I think could be made is the ability to replace the magic or the made fire window within your given environment. So the first time I actually jumped into made fire, I was in the general menu here. I selected made fire and I like looked down at something. I was down here and I remember it opened up and I realized oh man that is inside my floor in my table and I was trying to find a way to pin it or to replace it so again I went to the settings menu to see if there was a different way I could place it or replace it and I couldn't find anything so that would actually be a really nice way to do that currently the only way to replace it is to close out of the app move the, the general menu over and restart it in a different location which works that's a decent workaround for right now but again I'm lazy you know most most users are and I'd love to be able to repin that if I ever need to improvement number three is the loading screen so depending on the comic book um, you have these loading page UI elements that pop up, right? So I have this thing downloaded. I'm not streaming it off the internet. I actually downloaded it from the Made Fire app. So I'm not really sure why it's taking all this extra time to load, but you find that it just pops up right in the middle of your graphic. And I don't know if that's really necessary. I feel like it'd be totally possible to have it placed up in the corner somewhere where it's still viewable and it indicates that it's still downloading. See, the music still plays even when the next pages are loading. So last improvement here, improvement number four, is seems to be a download bug for some reason that 
Here from the storefront, I select a comic and I decide that I want to read it. So I go ahead and download it. And it's going to go through this download process. And after it's done downloading, if I want to go back to the store, this store button does not work. It won't take me back to the store. The only way I can get back to the store is using this middle button, this home button here. That will take me back to the store. Or if I go settings first and then to store, then it will take me to the store. Great, so it's downloaded. Let's try to go back to the store and see if this works. So I'm clicking on the controller right now. I'm touching on the touchpad. It's not letting me go. The trigger won't let me go. However, the home button will let me go back to the storefront. So there's a little bug for you. So what is the vision and the future of Made Fire and Magic Leap? Well, Andy Lanning said that Made Fire, the purpose is not to replace physical comics, but to augment them. And Ant Williams, Anthony Williams, in paraphrasing Ronnie Abbott, said this is potentially the printing press for mixed reality. So looking at these two statements, we can understand that this is a codeless, uh, creator-driven content platform and distributor allowing illustrators, artists, and storytellers to basically just go directly to their viewer. They, can, they don't have to work within game engines, they don't really have to mess around with the code, that they can use their artistry um, directly in the platform to create and release their content. And that's a wonderful thing, and I'm excited to see where else they're going to take it.